All right, guys. Now, <laughs> surprise, new video. Okay, um, I haven't been able to record any videos for the past week or so. I've been very, very busy with schoolwork. Family's been very busy. It's been a mess. But um, so I figured, you know, why not give a review? So I. Well, first off, some news. I think I might end up redoing my Persona 2 review. I think I was, um, I felt like I was just ranting on that video. I felt like I could express my opinions a little bit better in that video. So it's most likely I will be redoing that. Unless, of course, you guys like it. In that case, I don't know, maybe I'll leave both versions up anyway. Today I'm going to be re reviewing, not really, it's really hard to review Persona 3 and Persona 4 because they're, they're just great games. They are. Like, there's really, you can't really argue against that. They are masterpieces, just utter masterpieces. So I figured, you know, why not compare these two masterpieces because they are commonly compared and they are drastically, drastically different games. Um, and that's totally cool. I mean, I would never expect uh, the Persona series to go to Persona 4 after Persona 3, but I'm glad it did because both are just great games. So. For this review, just to get the ideas flowing, I have a uh, Persona playlist playing. Should be fun. Uh, let's see if the autoplay is on. And oh my God, it is, huh? Because YouTube just works better on PCs. Take that, Apple fanboys. Anyway, getting back. Persona Three. Well, first off, in case you guys didn't know this, you know all five of you. Uh, Persona Three has three different games. There's Persona Three for the PS2, Persona Three FES, which is also for the PS2, which came out two years later, I believe. And that featured bonus content in the main story, which was, I believe, more weapons and, like, like you can fuse weapons and whatnot, and what else, what else? Oh, yeah. And it also included The Answer, which is a 30-hour uh, bonus extension or another story after the events of Persona 3. My personal review on The Answer, it's really just... 25 hours of grinding with like five hour cutscenes like and let's be really like grinding I, I it's I really can't recommend it fans of Persona 3 even people who really really like the journey like I do they are really really split on the answer and for very very good reasons one it's way 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 harder than the journey and that turns a lot of people off including myself second of all there's no social links like at all so if you like the social links more than the combat, the answer might not be so pleasant for you. Uh, anyway, that concludes my thoughts on the answer and whatnot. Anyway, the third game is Persona 3 Portable, which I believe to be the definitive version. For many reasons. One, it's portable. You really... For a game that's as good as Persona 3, you really want... Oh, okay, okay. Never mind. Sorry, just something happened with the playlist. Anyway. The thing I love about Persona 3 is that, well, Portable at least, is that you can take such a great game anywhere. And for a game with that much data, for them to make it portable, that took a lot of effort. I mean, there's no cutscenes, there's no open world map, save for the dungeon that's Tartarus. Um, yeah, I'm really impressed with what they did. And I think it's actually my favorite because there's actually they added a girl main character, which I hope they do, or I hope they do do in... Um, uh, in Persona 4 Golden, which they probably won't, or I hope they do that in Persona 5 because, you know, Persona series from a girl perspective, awesome, why not? <laughs> anyway, uh, I, I personally prefer the portable version over the others because, well, for a number of reasons actually. One, as I mentioned before, portable. That's a boost already. Second, you can control your party merge during combat. In Persona 3 and Persona 3 FES, you cannot control your party members. They, you can set their AI to do something, but the AI is not that good. In fact, it ends up getting you killed more than anything because in Persona 3, FES, and Portable, if your teammates die, that's okay. If you die, it doesn't matter if your teammates are at full health, it's game over. And what happens most of the time is that your healers like Yukari and Ken, two characters, they, they end up healing themselves but not healing you or the party. And... <laughs> And sometimes your characters will like cast a thunder spell against an enemy that reflects thunder and it massively damages the party. Uh, it just, it, it really takes me off. Especially Mitsuru, it's fun because I think Junpei is actually the least useful of the party members. 
in the portable version, but in the PS2 version, he's probably most useful. And Mitsuru, someone I, I use fairly frequently in the portable version, I never use an FES. Two reasons. Tentrofu, Marin Karen. She, <laughs> she constantly spams those. It's, it's kind of hilarious. In fact, I, I'm probably going to make a video on Persona 4 Arena of how Mitsuru really should play, or how a realistic Mitsuru would play. It's hilarious. Anyway, so that's uh, the comparison. If you have to get one, if you really, really want one, I say go with portable. That's just my opinion. It's portable. As I said before, I know I'm repeating myself. Uh, there actually is some bonus content. Uh, Margaret, the Bubble Room attendant from Persona 4, is actually in Persona 3. And they actually do have quite... They actually do have more references to Persona 4. Uh, you can see Yukiko in the girl file. I actually did not know that. That's actually a really, really cool um, reference. And, yeah, I just... Oh, yeah. So, anyway, that's, that's Persona 3. Persona 4, it's only for PS2, but there is a... Um, how would you say... Re-release, I guess, with bonus content, it's actually a bigger game than the PS2 version, which is kind of scary considering, uh, <laughs> well, not scary, kind of cool because, you know, technology and whatnot, but Persona 4, uh, I've just played the PS2 version, no one in America who hasn't imported has played the golden version yet. Anyway, Persona 4, you can control your party members this time. Brilliant. I like that. The battle system is much improved because in Persona 3 you had a co-op attacks, which means your party members would randomly um, would randomly help you out and attack at the cost of your one more attack. But in Persona 4, every character on your team has a different attack as well as a different assist, and it just the combat just feels a lot better. However, uh, wait. However, in Persona 4 and Persona 3, here's the difference. There goes my cell phone. Damn. And in Persona 3, to heal in Tartarus the Dungeon, you would have to pay a clock. And it's not that pricey. Like, I never found myself hurting that much when I had to use the clock. Uh, you know, like, because I'm usually... A lot of people do this, including myself. I like to... Well, in Tartarus, there's six different blocks, and you can only advance so high up into the tower at one time before uh, a barrier blocks you off. I, okay, so, yeah, whatever. But in Persona 4, uh, in the dungeons, there's a fox. The fox, it does not recover your HP, it only recovers your SP. And it costs way, way too much for it to be worth it. Because in Persona 4, I found myself to be way, way more strapped for cash than I ever was in Persona 3. Like, that's not necessarily a bad thing, it's not... I wasn't nearly as strapped for cash as I was in, Pers in um, Final Fantasy XII. That game, I'm constantly broke. In Persona 4, I have a couple, I have some in the spare here and there, but not enough for like 40,000 just to heal my SP. No. I only had to use that once, and that was for like the final dungeon. Anyway, Persona 4, in my opinion, on normal mode, when you compare the two, Persona 4 is much harder than Persona 3 is. At least in the beginning. So, like, well, before I get back to this, I gotta compare. Okay, so Persona 3 music, in my opinion, or Persona 4 music? Both composed by the same guy. Both share the same Velvet Room theme. Both have wonderful, I repeat, wonderful openings. They have amazing final battle, uh, final battle music. They have brilliant credit music. I, I love the music. Sh Shoji Maguro, I think that's his or her name, I don't know. That person, they, they know what good music is. It's funny because uh, the English in Persona games actually sounds better than most English songs nowadays. Yeah. Anyway, when people ask me what song, well, like, what game has a better soundtrack, I tend to lean towards Persona 3. Now, hear me out. The only songs that really um, stick out to me in Persona 4 are the opening, um, Pursuing My True Self, uh, Facing My True Self, and the song that comes after whenever you fight a boss in Persona 4. Uh, Heaven, which is a dungeon theme in Persona 4. Uh, the Genesis, uh, New World Fool, which is another boss fight. And Nevermore, which is the credit song. That's actually a lot of good songs. They are both, all of them are so, so great. But in my opinion, Persona 3 just has, I don't know, it has, well, one, it has Burn My Dread, the opening version. It has the remix of Burn My Dread, the opening version. 
It has, what else? Memories of the school, Memories of the city, Mass destruction, Catchiest battle theme ever. <laughs> it has shadow, it has shadows, or darkness. It's, it's called Shadow or Darkness, which is the final boss theme from the last boss and the answer. And what else? It also has, oh yeah, Battle Hymn for the Soul or Battle for Everyone's Souls. That, like, that's the thing. Now, when people ask me to compare the Almighty to Battle for Everyone's Souls, both of them are so good because that's the thing about a lot of songs, and I'm actually guilty about this. Most people, including myself embarrassingly, we, we stop listening to a song if the first 20 seconds are good. With the Almighty and Battle for Everyone's Souls, you know crap is going to go down in the first five seconds of the song. It, it's just brilliant. Both those songs are so awesome. Persona 3 also has Burn My Dread, the final battle theme, Kimi no Kaioku, and it also has Never, um, not Never More, uh, Brand New Days, which is, the which is the credit theme song from The Answer. And not only that, Persona 3 Portable, the title screen song, which is a remix of Brand New Days, or at least the piano section, I could listen to that song for hours. That, like, if you guys can hear this, and I hope you can, it is so freaking peaceful. I, I just love it. Persona 3 also has Unavoidable Battle, which is really, really good, in my opinion. Like, Shoshi Maguro, they... He, that person loves the guitar. I mean, you know what, dude? Stick with the electric guitar. It's doing you good. Uh, like, again, if you like the Persona 4 soundtrack better, that's totally cool. I have no issue. I love both soundtracks. I just like Persona 3 a little bit more. Another big aspect of Persona 3 and Persona 4 is the dungeon crawling. Which do I think is better? Tartarus or the dungeons inside the TV? Now, inside the TV... Well, Tartarus, actually. There's like 265 floors and that's the thing you always knew something more was coming always and you really and I kind of didn't like how there was a barrier blocking you from going up higher I always would ask why? why why is there a barrier why can't I just get stronger um, whatever it, it just didn't make that much sense to me but then again this is persona oh well, actually the persona series does actually make a lot of sense so I can't really complain about that but the Tartarus logic doesn't really make that much sense. Uh, Persona 4, there's about... I think there's eight dungeons. Don't quote me on that. I could, I could very easily be wrong about that, but there's about eight different dungeons. Each of them are different. And even though you know there's going to be more dungeons, the characters are hoping there's not going to be more dungeons. And, you know, and even though I really like the clock, and I do have more fun in the Dungeons of Persona 3, they got really creative and, uh, and pretty dickish with the, with the Dungeons of Persona 4, especially that um, castle dungeon, you know, when you have to find that um, shadow gem. That was a jerk move, Alice, but I applaud you for it. That was, that was pretty fun. And not only that, hang on, what about us is about the dungeons? Yeah, every dungeon has their own flair to it. They have different music, which I like, although the different Tartarus blocks also do have different music. Although, none of the Tartarus blocks are freaking heaven or anything catchy, you know? Maybe that's just me. However, now I'm going to compare... So, when it comes to dungeon crawling, I think the dungeons are better in Persona 4. But... Oh, oh another thing, another thing. In Persona 3 and Tartarus, there are these um, warp out sections. You can warp out on... They almost have them on almost every single floor. Almost. And you can just teleport back to the first floor, to your base, or... That's what I just call it. You know, you could do that almost any time. Heal, search your party members, go to the bell room if you need to. Great. In Persona 4, you have to rely on Teddy's Trafui spell. Or Trafui is a Treus. I think it's Trafui. Yeah. You either have to rely on that spell, which you don't get until quite a bit later. But what I use primarily were these items called Go Homes. And, what, and they basically teleport you out of the dungeon. I personally like... Although, although Persona 4 does, I will say this, Persona 4 does punish you for stupidity way more than it does in Persona 3. Because in Persona 3, if you don't prepare yourself correctly, you can just say before, see what's like, scout the area up ahead, then go back, change party members, heal and whatnot. But Persona 4, and not only that Persona 3, you could clear out 
all of Tartarus in one day. I wouldn't recommend it, but you could do it. In Persona 4, you got a time limit. You got a time limit for clearing those dungeons before you got to reset. Because uh, basically, well, I'll get to this later. I'll just get to this later. But in Persona 3, it's a lot more lenient with you. It's not going to punish you for stupidity as much as Persona 4 is. And that is where part of the difficulty for Persona 4 does come in. Not saying that's a bad thing. I do like hard games. I do. Persona 4 is much harder. I, I, will, I do like that. Now, for the dungeon design, I like Persona 4 better. In terms of dungeon, I just had more fun with Persona 3. I don't know why I just did. Although, they're equal. Just screw it. Equal. So, Persona 3 and 4 equal for 1. Well, tie 1, Persona 3, 1. For combat. In Persona 3, in Persona 3 and Persona 3 FES, you cannot control your teammates. That sucks enough. Although, you know what, if you like that, that's totally cool because in um, Portable, they give you the option of whether you want the AI or to control them. Totally cool. And if you like that game style, totally cool. It doesn't mean you're an idiot. That, that's totally fine. Although, like, let's say in Persona 3, you hit an enemy with its weakness, that knocks it down. But what happens if you hit it with its weakness again? It gets back up. <laughs> I, I, I'm glad how in Persona 4 and in Persona 3 Portable, they fix that where... If you hit an enemy with its weakness, and then you hit it with its weakness again, it gets Disney and it can't move, which makes more sense. So in terms of combat, I definitely have to go with Persona 4 over Persona 3. Even though Persona 3 does have fusion spells, I'm going to have to go with 4, just because of the fact that you can control your teammates. So that's 4-1, Persona 3 1, tie 1. What's another aspect? Oh yeah, the boss fights. Most of the boss fights in Persona 3 are just random shadows. Nothing really memorable, they're just blocking the next way. In Persona 4, they are... They're basically shadows or the dark halves of your teammates. Which I really think is really cool. All those fights are very memorable. The scenarios which follows, which follows the fights and comes before the fights, very memorable. I really enjoyed and I really remember all those fights. Like... And here's, and here's where the difficulty comes in. The fights are a lot harder in the beginning of the game. Like, okay, Yosuke Shadow, easy. Like, e easy, easy enough. Chia Shadow, easy. Yukiko's. Like, huge difficulty spike in, like, the third boss of the game. Totally threw me off guard. <laughs> and, like, yeah, I was kind of mad at first, but, you know, after some grinding, after some perseverance, I beat it. So I figured, all right, th that, was, that was quite a bit of a difficulty spike. They can't. It can't be that much bad. Kanji Shadow. <laughs> the, for being the fourth boss in the game, dear God, Kanji made me rage so freaking bad. And I, but my, my friend, she texted me, she said, hey, don't worry about it. After Kanji Shadow, all the, the rest of the bosses are easy. So I said, all right, all right. And like, I, I wasn't going to quit Persona 4 just because of one boss. I wasn't about to do that. I, I, I don't work that way. And not only that, there is one fight later in the game, which really, really took me by surprise. Not because of... I kind of knew the fight was coming, but... Uh, the boss would pull out a move where it says, The atmosphere has changed. And then just go... Guard, 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 guard. <laughs> because I didn't know what that meant. And then he uses Mazarodyne. It does like 600 damage to <laughs> It does like 5 or 600 damage to Chie who was guarding. I'm just like, ah, oh, crap. So in terms of bosses, Persona 4 really does beat out Persona 3 on this one. It, it just, it really does. And the boss fights are all unique, all pretty challenging. So I have to go with Persona 4. Persona 4 2, Persona 3 1, tied. Stories. All right. This, this is a very, very, very tough one because, okay, pers let me just read you the premise. Well, not read, let me tell you the premises. Persona 3. There's an hour between midnight and, basically midnight and one or midnight and midnight called the dark hour. And it has been going on for the past 10 years or God knows when. And basically you move into a new dorm because your parents, like you're an orphan, your parents died in an accident like 10 years ago. And then when you're walking to your dorm, you see that everyone has transformed into coffins, except you, and except the people inside the dorm. 
And when you're greeted in the dorm, you're greeted by a young boy called Pharaohs. And then he basically makes you sign a contract, well, sign your name, and then you enter the Velvet Room. Cool, that is so cool. And basically, Igor, the attendant, well, the leader, I'm just calling the master of the Velvet Room, he makes you sign a contract which says, I accept full responsibility for my actions. And that basically gives you the wild card, at least to my knowledge. And what goes from there? Oh my god. Persona 3, like, get, get back to my Persona 2, why I hate Persona 2 and why Persona 3 so much. Persona 3 fixed everything that was wrong with Persona 2. Great story. No, no, beautiful story. Great characters, great boss fights. Oh, okay, okay, I guess I'm running about Persona 2. Oh, go, go, go. Okay. Beautiful story. Wonderful character developments. Twists. I, at, at every single story, there's always a part where crap gets real. I'm not gonna, without spoiling anything, once October hit in Persona 3, you guys know what I'm talking about. And please, don't put spoilers in the comments. Please. Just please. Persona 3. Once it hit October, I was... Wow, I was... I was freaking scared. Like... Like, I thought that game was good enough already. And then it just got better and better and better and so much better. Just... Oh my... And, and the last month... Oh my gosh, that was one of the greatest... Oh, even the final boss fight. The credits. The epilogue. Everything is just beautiful. That I have never played. Persona 3 and Persona 4 are easily in my top five favorite games of all time. Easily. I mean, oh, I, I'll go much more into detail about this later when I'm talking about the final boss in the epilogue. But, dear God, they, they knew what to do with a good premise. They really did. I don't know who they fired for, from Persona 2. But whoever took his spot, keep that guy hired. That, that guy, the story writer for Persona 3 and Persona 4, keep them on. They're doing their job right. They're doing it so right. Anyway, Persona 4, and oh yeah, Persona 3, the theme of it is life. What are you going to do with your life? How much does life mean to you? That's a very, that's a very hard subject to not sound like an idiot about. Especially in JRPG, and this is coming from someone who really, really likes. Actually, ask for that. Uh, I actually, anyone, just coming from anything. If you're gonna make the theme about life, you really need to know your stuff. And the writers, they know their stuff so well. It never sounds preachy. In fact, I felt like a better person after playing Persona 3. I did. I felt like I was enlightened. In fact, if if like. If anyone is having issues, like, I, like, I don't know, if they're going through a rough time, or if they're, if they're having a struggle, like, if they're having a rough time, or if they're, like, a common issue for many people, in my opinion, is finding their purpose in life. Play Persona 3, you will find that purpose. I'm sure many people who play Persona 3 also know this feeling. Great. I... Persona 3 is so beautiful. I love Persona 3. Persona 4 story, it deals with the truth. The theme is the truth. How much is the truth worth? What are you going to do for the truth? How much do people care about the truth? And the premise is, uh, you're not an orphan. You're, um, the character's name is Yunar Kami in Persona 4 while in Persona 3. His name is Minta Rosado. And... Basically, your parents, they, their jobs got moved, and you have to stay with your uncle in a boondocks town called Inaba. Well, at least boondocks in the game. I don't know how it's like that in real life. I've never been there. I've never been outside America. Anyway, you go there, and then you enter the bubble room while you sleep on the train. And it's Igor, again. Although, I don't think you have to sign... Oh, do you have to sign a contract? I, I, I think you do sign a contract. I don't think it's the same contract, though. Anyway, you go there, you know, you go to high school, everything's fine, but then you hear a rumor about the Midnight Channel. The rumor is, if you stare into your TV while it's raining outside, and it's midnight, you will see the, you will see the image of your soulmate. 
And so your friends try to do that. However, when you look into the TV, you poke the TV and then you find out that your hand can go through. Only yours. And then you, f you, see, you see a girl on the figure of the TV. And then the next day you find out, like, this is not a spoiler. This happens, well, this is not a spoiler. You, f you find this in like the first hour of playing. It's, it's really not a spoiler. It, it, okay, look, if you, think that, if you think that something you find out in the first hour of a game is a spoiler, um, it just, just stop watching this video. Like, that's totally cool, but for those of you who play the game or don't care, continue watching. So you, f you find that girl, you see this girl on the TV, and then everyone says, you, you get called by your friends, they say, did you see that too? I think we all saw the same person. But then, the next day, you find out that the girl has been murdered. Yeah, crap goes down. And then later, you find out that one of your friends that you met, Yukiko, you see her on the TV, and she went missing at the same time. But before that, um, but bef well, actually, I skipped ahead a little bit. But before that, you and Yosuke, who, by the way, is awesome. <laughs> Many people have deemed him Broske Awesomer. That is an awesome nickname for an awesome character. Seriously, Yosuke is such a bro. Anyway, you go in her, you, you go in her, I know. You go into the TV, and then you find a small bear called Teddy. Uh, we don't know much about Teddy, but you will. You, you do if you play the game, we're not gonna spoil anything. And then he basically says, oh yeah, strange things have been going on here, like fog has been moving around, the shadows inside the TV have been really, really violent lately. So you and Yosuke go to find out, like, What's inside here? Like, you go explore. And then you find... And then you find a liquor store inside the TV. And then you eventually find out that... The, whatever is inside the TV... Well, basically, the landscape of the TV is determined by whoever enters the TV. So, like, let's say... Or, like, your desires of the TV. Like, let's say... Well, for example, um, Yukiko. Uh, she makes a castle inside the TV because... I'll get to this later. And anyway, it turns out that when you're inside the TV, shadows are your dark selves. Or basically the part that you keep hidden from everybody. Yosuke, he sees his shadow. And you know what? This is whenever, well most of the time, when I see a dark, like a shadow in any fiction, I most of the time groan. Like in Naruto, I said, really? There's a shadow? I stopped reading. I stopped reading after that. Although Shadow Link is badass because there's no real exposition to it. It's just a shadow. Like, it's not supposed to be his dark half or anything. It's just a shadow. I'm cool with that. And in Persona 2, you guys know how I feel about that, so I'm not going to rant about that anymore. But in Persona 4, and like, here's, here's my thing about Persona 4. Persona 4 really is Persona 2 done right. Because there are shadows in Persona 2 and Persona 4, only except in Persona 4, it's believable. Okay, actually, I do have to go back for Persona 2 on this one because because you really have to compare Persona 2 to 3 and 4 just to see what's so bad about it and why Persona 3 and 4 are just so great. You really do. So, in Persona 4, you barely know these characters, but you see their shadows, and their shadows basically, like, they're trying to bait them, they're trying to troll them. They're trying to get them to deny them. And so that they can take their place and live their, out their desires. And it's way more well done Persona 4 than it is Persona 2. Because in Persona 4, it makes sense. And even when you don't know that much about these characters, and you find out something about them that you really... Well, for like, well, for like Yukiko, you kind of... You, like, you understand. For Chia and Yosuke, they never have any... Like, you never would have thought, oh, wow. Wow. But... You're like, you think, wow, I didn't, I didn't know you were in those, man. Like, I, I didn't know you felt that way. But you know what? You barely know them. And you know what? It, it just, it makes sense. It's not phoned in or anything. And you actually get the feeling that they're overcoming their issues. Which I really like. I mean, there's just... In Persona 3 and Persona 4, there's so much character development. It, it's amazing. I love it. So, you beat a shadow, and then once Yosuke accepts his shadow, he says, Yeah. You're the part I never show anyone. I didn't want to accept it, but that's me. You are me. And then the shadow becomes a persona. In fact, a persona is control of one's shadow. 
Personas and shadows are one and the same, only except persona is a shadow controlled by the ego, while shadow is just a shadow repressed. Which, you know, it's a pretty cool premise. I really, really do like it. So basically, it's a murder mystery. You're trying to find out who's throwing people on the TV, who's killing them, why. I really like both plots of the game. I really, really do. But for the plot that just left a bigger impact on me, I'm going to have to go with Persona 3. So Persona 4, 2, Persona 3, 2, one time. Final battle. The final battle of Persona 3 is one of the most... Oh. No, it is one of the best final battles I have ever fought, but oh my god did it piss me off. It is a very, very hard fight. Although that's probably because I was at level 66. So you should probably be at like mid-70s before you even take on the final boss. Trust me, if you don't want to go through what I did. The final boss has 14 forms. 14. It took me 50 minutes for my last try. It took me five tries to kill this thing. <laughs> and it also had, you know how whenever bosses lose HP, they bring out new attacks? This one attack, it's called Night Queen or Bloody Sunday, depending on what difficulty you're on. That attack, oh yeah, and also it goes twice per turn, of course. And not only that, it also has an invincibility move, which makes it invincibility of and not only invincible, but it reflects damage back at your party members for a certain amount of turns. And getting back to Night Queen or Bloody Sunday, it, it well, one, it hits all your party members. Two, it inflicts status conditions on all of your party members. I remember one time I was panicked, someone was afraid, someone was raged, and the last person was charmed. Now, I know what you guys are thinking, did that charm thing happen to him? No, 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 no. I was lucky, well, actually for my last try with um, the final boss, I used the scroll card, I used the scroll card salvation to teach my persona. So that when everyone was inflicted with status conditions, I just used salvation and then they were good to go. But well, by the way, you really should have salvation. Salvation is a great move to have for that final boss. But the thing, I think the thing that would have killed me about the final boss if it actually did happen, was that while your characters are charmed, uh, they will often heal the enemy. And around this time of the game, your characters have a move that will heal all the HP of whoever they cast it on. Many people, not including me, have had the final boss healed back to full health. At least in the last form. And... Oh, dude, if that happened to me, I think I would have eaten my PSP and sheer rage. I mean, that is a true troll final boss. It, it really is. But, oh yeah, in the last form, it's strong against everything. You're doing way less damage. That That is just a brutal, brutal final boss. It's a great final boss, though. I love it. It's, it is brutal, though. But the, but the fight after, what you do after, it's also equally cool. Like, you know how there's a, a bat, like, a Gameplay final boss and the story final boss, both are equally great. Both have great music. And in Persona 4 final boss, it took me one try. Like, like granted, I needed two somas, which we which we fill the entirety, all the HP and uh, spirit points of your party members. Um, yeah, I felt like if I didn't have that or the Persona Trumpeter, I feel like that would have been much harder. But let me give you some advice. In Persona 4, if you have two Somas, some Soul Food, Trumpeter, Tamlin, and Black Frost Fused, you're good to go. As long as you're not a dumbass with your equipment or your moves, you're good to go for that final boss. So, <laughs> my, my point really has to go for Persona 3 just because, oh, that, oh so much rage. Uh, not only that, I think the design is a lot cooler for the final boss of Persona 3. So, yeah, Persona 3, Persona 3 gets 3 points, Persona 2, Persona 4, 2 points, Tie is 1 point. Okay, T to the characters. Both characters, well, okay, I'm going to morph two different categories, Personas and characters, into one, because I kind of have to. 
Because the personas are representations of characters, or rather, guardian spirits, or whatever you want to call them, characters. Okay, I'm going to be comparing the difference, basically characters that show the same arcana. So I'm going to be carrying Junpei to Yosuke, um, Yukari to, I don't know, y Yukari to Yukiko, let's just go there. Fuga to Risei, you know. Okay, first off, Minato Arasato versus Yuna Arakami. Minato can use fusion spells. You cannot. And not only that, if both, if anyone here has watched, no, not watched, if anyone here has played two, both of the games, uh, there goes my printer, sorry guys. Anyway, if you guys, if you guys have played both Persona 3 and Persona 4, you know Minato wins as a main character. You, you, you guys know. I'm not going to spoil anything, but you know he does. So that's one for Persona 3, one for Persona 4. Yosuke versus Junpei. I love both these guys. These guys are both so, so cool. I mean, they are just, they are the best. I, I just want to sit down and have a root beer with them, you know? These guys are just so cool. Uh, Yosuke is, I forget what his voice actor is. Junpei is voiced by Vic Manana, so that definitely helps. But, and both of them do, ha do share some tragic events. Although, man, this is a tough one. This is a very, very, very tough one. Even though Yosuke is my main for Persona 4 Arena, and, I, and Yosuke is, in my opinion, the best party member, well, best attacking party member in Persona 4, and even though in, I don't really use Junpei that much in Persona 3, Ju I pick Junpei character-wise, but Yosuke combat-wise. So, tie for that, I guess? Yeah, yeah, Todd. Anyway, now the Emperor. Akihiko versus Kanji. Now, admittedly, I used Akihiko way more than I used Kanji. No, don't get me wrong. I love Kanji as a character. He is, he is awesome. <laughs> any, any character that Troy Baker voices is awesome by default. I mean, God, he is... Oh, man. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's another example. Combat-wise, I think Akihiko's better. Character-wise... Kanji is far superior, like just way far superior. I'm not gonna spoil anything because even though if it's kind of not a spoiler, his shadow, like his fight with his shadow, I feel, I feel bad for Kanji. Like, especially back in like 2008, like, okay, so I, I'll just tell you, Kanji's um, sexuality is questionable. This game was made back in 2008 with the whole Prop 8 thing in California. Back then, people were like, no, 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 no gays. Like, that, that's bad. No, like, but now people are a little bit more open. Yeah, you still got those a-holes there. But, you know, like, people are more accepting now. Back in 2008, I felt like that was a really good message. Just like, who cares? This guy's a great guy. Don't, doesn't matter. I'm like, yeah, like, I don't get, like, yeah, I, I don't get why people hate homosexuals. Just let them be, come on. They, <laughs> they like the same things you like. Come on. Well, okay. Hang on. Yeah, I'm just like, they're people too, guys. Come on, chill, chill. So, Kanji's interaction, and like being made fun of because he's a real big, tough guy, but he likes to sew. He sews really well. I like him, right? That's a great hobby, and I really do feel bad for him because, like, I was, well, okay, that's not true. I was called gay when I was little. <laughs> Back when I thought that was an insult, and I still don't know why that's considered an insult. But, you know, I was, I was I was a bit of an outcast when I was little, and so was Kanji. And uh, I really do identify with him. In fact, anyone who's played both games will find that the Persona 4 characters are far more relatable than, than the Persona 3 characters. I'll get back to this, but just remember I said that. So, yeah, so it's another tie. I mean, I love Kanji way more than I like Akihiko. But Akihiko is just way more useful in my opinion. Okay, now Yukiko versus Yukari. Believe it or not, I do not hate Yukari like everybody else does. I hate that she can't hit anything with a bow, but as a character, I have no issues with her. I, I don't have any issues. I don't. However, I just felt like... I don't know. I just liked Yukiko better. She, she just seemed more pleasant than Yukari to be around. I, I don't know. And not only that, she can hit stuff with a regular attack. Both are great healers, don't get me wrong. 
but I really am going to have to go with Yukiko. So, Persona 4 won, Persona 3 won, uh, tie 2. What's next? Oh, the uh, Navigator. Fuka versus Rise. I know some people who can't stand Fuka. How do you hate her? She's so adorable. <laughs> like, she, she's almost a human form of Navi that's not nearly as annoying. And like, I, I, granted, I don't find Navi that annoying. Maybe, I, maybe that's just me. Maybe I'm not that irritated or annoyed by characters who are just trying to help because that's really what she's trying to do. She's just trying to help you. And I really, her, she is better than Risa because when you analyze enemies, she will tell you all the info. When you analyze enemies with Risa, you actually have to hit an enemy with a certain type of attack, and then it will say whether it's no strong, repels it, or is weak against it, or it's neutral. So I do like Fuka better, and she's more powerful. So that's Persona 3, 2, Persona, f Persona 4, 2, yeah, so tied. Now comes Igis versus Teddy. Igis being the Chobit of the group, Teddy being the weird thing of the group. <sighs> this is a tough one because I, like, okay, a lot of people find Teddy annoying. I can't hate him. Like, even if you want, you can't hate him. I mean, as perverted as he is, as weird as he is, you really can't hate him. And I guess that, like, oh my gosh, her, her development, like, like, yeah, she's a Chobit, she's a robot. She, it does like the, like, when you, you're like, oh, robot character, they're gonna be all like human and stuff. I thought it was gonna be stereotypical, it wasn't. At that ending of Persona 3, I just went, I love you, I guess. You are amazing. So, point goes to Persona 3 for I guess. What else is there? Um, oh. Uh, Ken and Ken slash Koromaru or Naoto. Uh, like that's the thing about Naoto. Naoto, I almost never used her because she's really, really good with regular enemies, but she is crap against bosses because she has light spells, dark spells, and area, or like, I always call it area when it's just hit all enemies. That That's just how I define it. She has um, all enemy hitting spells, physical attacks. That's fine, but none of that really helps you with the boss fight. And that's what you're doing in Persona 4. You're preparing for the shadow boss fight that lies at the end of each dungeon. You are. So, yeah, I definitely have to go with Ken slash Koromaru. He's so cute. Koromaru's just a cute little doggy. You can't hate him. So that goes Persona 3, 4, and Persona 4, 2. What else? Oh, Chie versus Mitsuru. Chie. <laughs> uh, like, okay, I did play with the AI in Persona 4 for a while. The AI is nowhere nearly as bad in Persona 4 as it is in Persona 3. And Chie's AI actually does a good job for what her character does, which is basically hit things really hard with physical attacks. And not like that, I don't know, I just felt like she was more enjoyable to be around, so... Again, that, that's just my opinion, but... So that's Persona 4 3, Persona 3 4. What other characters are there? I'm trying to think of more party members. Oh, right. Is that a party member? Hang on, wait, 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 wait. Don't, don't examine me here. Oh yeah, but Persona 3 also does have an extra character. He's awesome, by the way. Uh, Shinji, Shin Shinjiro is so cool. Although, the Persona 3 does have a better cast, although, like, for individual characters, individually, I do feel like Persona 3 does have a slight edge. But as a whole, and the relatability, I feel like the Persona 4 characters are way more relatable than the Persona 3 characters. Because, like, for those of you who have played the game, dear god, see, like, sees, that's what the group of Persona 3 calls themselves. It's like a freaking orphanage. I mean, like, like that, that's not a bad thing. Great characters. I love them all. But, like, Persona 4 characters are just way more relatable. Like, 
like, I actually felt myself relating to Kanji a little bit. I, I felt myself relating to Yosuke a little bit. I, I felt for these guys. I really did. I, I just... <sighs> Is this going to be a tie? Because individually, on characters, Persona 3 wins, but as a whole, and how they're relatable, Persona 4 wins. So I guess that's a tie. So... Tied on one... Crap, I lost count. Uh, no, no, tied on two. First three wins in music and story. And final boss. Persona 4 wins in... Crap! Okay, I can't remember. Dang it. Ah, uh, crap. Okay, I'll just move on. Social links. Big part of both Persona games. Big part. Big, big, big part. And um, basically, you hang out with people after school in Persona 3 and Persona 4, sometimes at night, and you basically just get to know them, you hang out with them, you become friends with them. That, that is such a great feature for a game called Persona, because, you know, building your own personality, we are built through others, really. And in my opinion, no man can be alone. No, no one can... You need other people to grow as a person, and... In Persona 1 and 2, you're not really doing that. You're just, oh, shoot demons, kill things, kill Hitler. Like, that's not really, like, you could, you could very easily take the name Persona off Persona 1 and 2 and just name it something else and it would be fine. Persona 3 and 4, no, these are, these are Persona games. These are. In Persona 3, well, okay, let me just tell you off the bat. I do feel like Persona 4 is superior to Persona 3 in the social links. One reason. In Persona 4, okay, well, uh, in Persona 3, in Persona 4, excuse me, your characters have uh, second tier personas that they can level up to, which means their personas will change. Excuse me. Sorry, I'm doing that right. Which basically means they will. Um, they will know something, and they might, they may or may not still be weak against something. In Persona 3, every single character uh, changes personas. Every single one. Every single one. Um, re regardless of whether or not you hang out with them. And you can only hang out with the girls on your team. I'm just like, well, I can't hang out with Junpei. He's a total bro. Let me hang out with him. And... I don't know, I, I just would like to hang, like, I'm not critic. okay, I am criticizing it, but I'm not calling the social link system in Persona 3 bad by any means. In fact, I love the social link section of the game way more than the <laughs> combat section of the game. And there's basically 10 levels of each social link. And when you reach level 10, you basically get the ability to f fuse the ultimate persona of that arcana. So if you max out a song from the Fortune Arcana, you can fuse Norn, the ultimate of the Fortune Arcana. When you max out a song of the Magician Arcana, you can fuse Cert, the ultimate of the Magician Arcana. These personas are really, really worth your time to get. However, in both games, you really, really are strapped for time if you're going to try to max out every single social link. But in Persona 3, you actually do get reward for maxing every single one out, while in Persona 4, you don't. Although, it kind of is its own reward, but you get your own reward. So, but in Persona 4, you can hang out with every single, you can hang out at Social Link with every single one of your party members. Every single one. Yosuke, Chie, Yukiko, Kanji, Naoto, you name it. Teddy, no, well, okay, Teddy does go, you do Social Link with him automatically, but it's still good. And only Teddy's uh, Persona change is mandatory. You can, in fact, you can go through the game without hanging out with any of your friends, but it's highly, highly recommended that you do so. Trust me. Because, when it, well, one, when a character reaches level 10, their persona changes. Well, level 10 social link. Their persona changes. Yosuke, who was weak against electricity and strong against wind, he now knows wind, is strong against fire, and has no weaknesses. When you max out Chie, her... Uh, she was initially strong against Ike, weak against fire. In once you once her persona changes, she only knows ice. She has no weaknesses. Yukiko, initially strong against fire, weak against, weak against ice. Once her persona changes, 
Uh, Noel's fire, strong against electricity, but it's still weak against ice. A little bit. Kanji, initially strong against electricity, weak against wind. Once he changes, Noel's electricity, no weaknesses. And not only that, characters will eventually, um, like at level 3 I think, it says they will, they will um, do a co-op attack with you. Level 5, I think, they will help you up or help a character up if they are knocked down. Level 6 or 7, they, um, like a as the social link goes on, they will survive a kill that would kill, they, uh, kill. they will survive a hit that will kill them. They will take a hit for you, which is awesome. No, Kanji, he takes the hits like a freaking champ. He does the drop kick of self-sacrifice. <laughs> that is awesome. Not only that, he can, uh, if a character gets a critical or if they knock down an enemy, if their social link is high enough, they will um, heal a SAS condition. Only certain SAS conditions, though. So, you just the fact that your social links affect the actual combat, I felt was really, really smart and much better than the way it was in Persona 3. That being said, you're not, in my opinion, you're not nearly as strapped for time as you are for the social links in Persona 4 than you are in Persona 3. Not only that, um, what else? What else is there? Oh yeah, not only that, uh, part of the fun of Persona 3 and Persona 4 is making your own harem. This <laughs> is just like dating five girls at the same time. In Persona 3, it says, like, you have, like, once you reach, like, level 7 or 6 of the card, says, she might get upset if you go out with another girl. I never got caught in Persona 3. I tried to get caught in Persona 3. I never could get caught. In Persona 4, I got caught, like, four different times. It was, it was just funny. It, it was hilarious. I, I'm glad they fixed that. I really am. Because that was one of the things I felt was lacking. It's, it's way more realistic, and you can actually friend zone yourself in Persona 4. It's actually kind of funny. Um, so, social links, I really do feel like Persona 4 does have better social links. So, point for Persona 4, that's like, what, 2? Persona 3 has 4. The, um, what else? Oh yeah, the, your character personal stats. In Persona 3, you have academics, courage, and... Uh, Academics, oh, and Charm. You have six levels of each. And basically, they affect who you can social link with. Like, for example, Mitsuru. To social link with a Mitsuru, you have to be, you have to max out your intelligence. Okay. To hang out with your car, you have to max out your Charm. To hang out with Fuka, you have to max out your Courage. Totally cool. And, but, <laughs> like, think all about this. You're brave enough to fight shadows who that you've never seen before in your life and pull a evoker to your head that looks like a gun pull the trigger to summon a god or a demon behind you but you're not brave enough to try a girl's cooking I, I never got that but in Persona 4 there's actually five different stats there's understanding knowledge expressiveness I think academics and courage so there's five now and they all still have six and not only that in Persona 4, there's way more, there's way more, how do I say, there's way more opportunities where your stats matter. In Persona 3, yeah, intelligence affects, well, academics, it affects how well you do on tests. In Persona 4, all of your stats, you have frequent opportunities to, like, when a character asks, oh, hey, what do you think of this, or, like, what do you think of this, or, like, why didn't you do this? There's always, there's almost always a third option, but throughout... Most of the first playthrough, I felt like I couldn't, I couldn't do most of those options because it says, oh, your understanding isn't high enough, like, your expressiveness isn't high enough. So, I felt like that idea was much more fleshed out in Persona 4 than it was in Persona 3. Yeah, and most, I, I feel like most of you will agree with me for those of you who have, who have played both of those games. So, Persona 4, 3 points, Persona 3, 4 points. What other issue is there? Did I come on the... Both endings are way, way different. I'm not going to spoil anything. If you want to know how the endings are different, listen to Kimi no Kaioku from Persona 3, and then listen to Nevermore from Persona 4. Just, just hearing the songs alone, 
you know those endings are way different. But I don't know. I, I, I have such bad short-term memory right now, apparently. So how do I put this? I really can't say which ending is better. It really just goes to your taste, so tie. Is there anything else I can comment on? Yeah. Well, Persona 3, okay, I guess I can comment on the Velvet Room and the, uh, and the assistants. Persona 3, the Velvet Room is a never-ending uh, elevator that's continuously going up. And they have, and the assistant is Elizabeth, which is, she, she is just awesome. And then portable version, if you're playing the girl fire, you can have the assistant be Theodore, a male assistant. But even if you're playing the girl fire, I urge you, pick Elizabeth. She is, it's, she's ditzy, but likable. Like, I don't think ditzy is the right word to describe her because, like, she's just like, oh, what's this? Is this a fountain? And then she just like pours like 500,000 yen into the fountain. It's hilarious. So she she gives you a lot of side quests to do. And like you can choose whether or not to do this, but you also have daily side quests, which I think are pretty entertaining. And even if you're a girl, you can still date Elizabeth. Awesome. But in Persona 4, the Vel Room is a limo. Awesome! <laughs> Both these Vel Rooms are just so damn cool. But in Persona 4, uh, Margaret, Elizabeth's older sister, is the assistant. And you can social link with her by using personas. But sh she's not the one that gives you the side quests. Random students and people in Inaba give you the side quests. But I never found myself doing those side quests in Persona 4 because it really just comes down to talking to a random person in school that you never talk to. While in Persona 3 it was, oh, fight, uh, like, get three of these things from this enemy. Simple enough. 100,000 yen. It's free! So... I felt like the side quests were better in Persona 3. And in Persona 4, you can social link with Margaret, but the only way to max out the social link is by fighting her. And Elizabeth and Margaret are major badasses. <laughs> Seriously, you do not F with these people. Hell, if you need any convincing that Elizabeth is badass, I dare you to fight her in score attack mode in Persona 4 Arena. I dare you. And she is just, she is just so cool. I, I love it. So, I, I love them both equal. Well, I like Elizabeth more, so I guess, it's not really a category, it's just a little minor thing. But, wow. Oh my god, I think I've been, I've been going on for like 57 minutes on this thing, I'm sorry. Uh, I hope you guys, didn't, I hope you guys enjoy this. So, in my opinion, Persona 3 Portable, I'm talking about the Portable version. Persona 3 Portable is better than Persona 4. Persona 4 is better than Persona 3 FES. Persona 3 FES is better than Persona 3. Persona 3 is better than Persona 1. Persona 1 is better than Persona 2. Okay? Like, that's just how I stand on this. So, again, if you like Persona 4 better than Persona 3 Portable, that's totally cool. I got no issue with that. Both of them are great, great games. If you haven't played any of the, either of these games already, Pick them up, go to GameStop, go to Amazon. It. Persona 3 Portable was the best 22 bucks I've ever spent in my life. Go buy these games. If you're a fan of good storytelling, buy, buy Persona 3 and Persona 4. If you're a fan of, of good anime, buy Persona 3 and Persona 4. If you're a fan of good combat, turn based combat, buy Persona 3 and Persona 4. Oh yeah, another thing about Persona 3 and Persona 4. For those last bosses, those things were challenging. I had to actually be touching the controller to fight those final bosses. While well, in Persona 2, it was just auto battle, play Final Fantasy 9. I, I didn't even touch the PSP for the final boss. I know I've said this already, but I want to get that point across. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm just kind of all, whew, I'm all gushed out here. I mean, I just, Wow, like Persona 3, beautiful. These games are beautiful. Just simply, simply beautiful. So much fun. Both of them provide more than 80 hours of entertainment. Go, go buy these games. Okay, wait, one more thing. Persona 3, New Game Plus. 
it carries over all of your character stats, it carries over your money, it carries over your personas, it carries over your equipment. It does not carry over your, your teammates' um, levels or stats. Persona 4, it doesn't carry... No, even Persona 3, it carries um, key items over. Persona 4, you're back at level 1. That enough just gives Persona 3 way, way more replay value. But despite that, both these games, I got at least 80 hours, you will at least get 80 hours of entertainment out of each game. So, as I said before, if you have not played these games yet, I urge you, play these games. Please. You'll be doing yourself a huge favor. Like, I have nothing else to say. Uh, I, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope I wasn't babbling too much, but you know, I had this torch guy signing off. I think I'll go uh, record some Persona 4 Arena videos, maybe redub some old, not some old, some new Pikmin videos. And I'll see you guys later. Have fun out there, Torture Lovers. <laughs>